Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. I am back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our special guest co-host, Flame Monroe. How was y'all's weekend this weekend? Ladies first, Flame, let's go. How was your weekend? Um, I had a great weekend. I went to, I went to Atlanta because, you know, it's always a big prize celebration in Atlanta doing MLK weekend. And uh, I met the king, a queen, and a couple of studs. So I had a great time in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I know my knew the king was a freedom fighter, but I was fighting to be free. I had a great time in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Hey, tell, us how, this tell us how you really feel. You have a lot of options, it seems like, out there. I see. always got options, Claudia. Oh, my God. In Atlanta, you never know what is what. So when I tell you, I couldn't tell, but they couldn't tell either. So I thought it was fair. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, Al, what would you do for the weekend? Oh, uh, I went to, a, actually, I went to a wine pairing. Um, the company that I'm working with on my buttery Chardonnay invited me out to a wine pairing so that I could become more knowledgeable about the different types of wine and what to pair it with. So it was really nice. All right. Well, Martin Luther King Jr. Day today. Uh, so just a happy one to our soulmates. Today is set aside to honor the life and work of Dr. King and for Americans to reflect on the principles of racial equality and nonviolent social change led by Dr. King. Aisha, why is it important to celebrate Dr. King's legacy, especially in today's climate? Let's go to you first, Al. Hey, you know, it's just so many reasons. Um, his tireless efforts advocating for civil rights has left an un undeniable mark on our society. It, it has left a, an undeniable uh, mark on our ability to get jobs now in the C-suite, all the way down to middle management to entry. It's helped us in education. We are now able to get into some of the finest institutions if we need be, if we don't go to HBCUs. It's helped us with home ownership so that we can have equity in the American dream. It's helped us in voting so that we can also have a voice, a voice and change. And that's more important than anything, especially as it relates to going from slavery to actually having a vote uh, as it relates to the Constitution. It's helped us in business owners to open up businesses and become self-sufficient. And it's also helped us in health care. So, you know, it's important for us to celebrate this, to honor it, to reflect it, to hold it up, to also remind those who are new to the country or new people born into the country or into these times what his legacy means and why it's important for us of color, especially black people, as it relates to civil rights. All right, Flame, what are your thoughts? Wow. Um, Martin Luther King, the, the leader that he was and the power and respect that he had <clears throat> from us as a people is so warranted right now. We don't even have a leader with that kind of respect right now. And I wish we had a black leader with that kind of, I think the closest thing we have is Ben Crump, but he's not even a politician. Uh, Martin Luther King meant a lot to us. We learned about Martin Luther King and the young with the freedom fighters and the civil rights, but I was not with the nonviolence because if you put your hands on me, the player going to show up and knock your block off. But... <laughs> But you know, my favorite quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was, and I read this when I was in high school, it was in his 1963 memoirs. It says, once you accept death, you're free because so many of us are afraid to die, but you have to live before you <clears> die. <throat> I've never been afraid to die. That quote right there, I think helped change my life to let me know that I'm gonna persevere. You can only kill me one time, but I'm gonna live 10,000 times. Mm. Um. What I like about King, of course, the obvious that everyone's already spoke on, um, you know, it's it, sadly he didn't have the respect that he gets now when he was here. And there's a lot of capping after the fact, you know, after all the work he did and how he literally laid his life on the line for the betterment of the country. And it doesn't only extend to black people, it's for the betterment of the entire country and the world. He's an example for the world. It's sad that he didn't really get all of his flowers while he was here, but once he died, uh, there's a lot of revisionist history, especially on the white side with, oh, he was such a, I mean, y'all was trying to get him out of here because he was so powerful. He was so inspirational. He was so able to galvanize people to get together. And we don't have that anymore. We don't have, we can't even get together between three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. And the fact that this man got people together like this and was so inspirational and his message still lives on. We don't, they don't make them like that anymore, you know, and hopefully we get someone uh, in our lifetime that we can see like this. But I hate that, you know, he did not get the full respect that he had, that he should have had when he was here, because that man gave his life for awareness. 
All right, let's get to some topics here. Speaking of MLK Day, Dr. King's daughter, Dr. Bernice King, wasn't here for Jonathan Majors comparing Megan Good to her late mother, Coretta Scott King. Dr. Bernice tweeted, my mother wasn't a prop. Oh, He's advocate before she met my father and she was instrumental in him speaking out against the Vietnam War. Please understand my mama was a force. Uh, the King family is tired of people playing in their faces, using the King name whenever they want to make a point. And I agree with them 1000%. Watch your mouth with the King name in it. Al, what do you think? You're having a reaction to this. What do you thought? Wait a minute. She said a prop, Flame and Claudia. Did y'all see that? She said a prop. Oh my God. This has got to be, this has got to be one of the most embarrassing moments. <laughs> in entertainment history. Jeez, what a read. What a read without reading. You know, I mean, what else can we say? We feel exactly the same way that Bernice feels, if anybody understands the effect and the significant contribution that Coretta Scott King has had on this country. And the sad part to me, Claudia and Flame, is that when he said it, the way he said it and the way that smirk on his face, he really thought that it landed. In that interview, he really thought that it landed that, oh, I met my Coretta Scott King. I, I don't know what to say. I think this just speaks volumes maybe to how disconnected Jonathan Major may be to the culture. And maybe it was that disconnect to the culture which has led him in this turmoil that he's in now. I mean, he clearly does not understand what the representation of Coretta Scott King means to the rest of the country and especially in the black community. So I don't know. I'm glad she got them together. And I support her 110% because for some reason, I don't know why Jonathan, it doesn't appear he has black people on his staff, a part of his management, a part of his PR team, or even any black friends, because all of them would have told him that was completely 110% something you should stay away with on a national interview. Blame, go ahead. I, know you I don't know if I agree with the way you set that up, Al. I understand where you're coming from, but I think the analogy was that he wanted a woman as strong and as powerful and as committed as Coretta Scott King, he met that woman. I don't know if he meant that Megan Good was going to be in, walking in the same shoes as Coretta Scott King, just somebody who was going to stand by his side in a time of crisis. Because, you know, Coretta stood by Martin through all the rumors and all the BS. She was the force and the strength to held him up. So I think in that regard, that's what he meant. But I do understand what you're saying. Dude, don't do that. But Jonathan is cool with me. He's my friend. But first of all, let me say, this Bernice King must have been raised around some gay folks because, baby, that was a read if I ever heard one. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> Jonathan Majors is tone deaf. Um, Jonathan, yeah. like, please stop. I, I feel like a lot of Black people were rocking with you because it was a case of a Black man and a white woman. And we're naturally going to feel like, oh, a brother's being lynched. And sometimes mm -hmm. we do give our brothers the benefit of the doubt even when they may not really deserve it because we're so, uh, you know, used to a black man and a white woman, a black man always loses. If they go up against each other, the black man's going to lose. So we have right. to be extra protective. So please, white America, middle America, mainstream America, understand where our mentality comes from. It's from a historical standpoint of, hey, man, we used to seeing our brothers getting set up. But in this case, Jonathan, you are digging your own grave. Just shut up. Right. Just stop saying stuff like this. Like, I get what you're saying. Uh, and Flame, you laid that out beautifully. He wanted someone to hold his, hold him down even through all his BS that he knows he's guilty of. But like, it's honestly, I've dated a narcissist before. It's giving narcissistic, narcissistic abusive behavior where you put these super high standards on whoever's with you. Like, why can't you be more like this person? Why can't you be more like Curtis Scott? I'm looking for this. And then you try to, if you're a people pleaser, oh, oh, okay, did I, did I, did I do like Curtis Scott King? Can, can I serve my man? Can I help you? It gives abusive a relationship. I don't know him, Flame. You say you know him. I don't know Jonathan Majors. But tell your boy to stop. He should have maybe used some more. Uh, somebody. Look, should. I agree. And let me tell you something, Flame. Let me tell you something, Flame. What we're not going to do is on this MLK Day, mm -hmm. support anybody that tells a white woman that she needs to be like Coretta Scott King. And then when he has no need for her, he's then going to tell a black woman that well, she needs to be like. Well, he kept the assimilation. That was his, I, I, they, I don't care what that. <laughs> I don't care what that is. You're not going to do it today on Martin Luther King. We're not going to disrespect that family. And we're not going to put any rhyme to that crazy reasoning. 
Oh, if you hadn't felt them guns, you would have been you would have been a lot yeah. nicer, Al. Because I touched them guns in Yellow Springs, baby. Oh, <laughs> so Flame, your perspective is definitely appreciated. We appreciate oh, yeah. all perspectives here. I get it. Um, but Jonathan, I do have to agree with Alan on on Martin Luther King Day. You can do it on Tuesday. Yeah, do it on Tuesday. Maybe all the weekend. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Oh. I'm not going to do it on Martin Luther King Day. All right. Jonathan, oh, I'm so sick of talking about this weird face dude. Uh, Flame, can you tell Jonathan how to pose better for these? Look, I'm so sick of this look. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, Flame. Claudia, you got to see him in person. He's much more handsome in person. And, and, and his aura is so nice. I know he is gets... It? I'm telling you. Really? Are you, just, are you just staring at his muscles and his neck? No, 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 because I would have looked at something else if I was in that mood. But what I'm <laughs> saying is, he really is not, a, he's a, he's a, he's, I'm not going to, like, cl classically handsome. He's not classically handsome. But he was so, he smelled like a million dollars. Claudia, you and I talked about that. And he was mm -hmm. such a pleasant man, and he does have a nice face. I hate that he's caught up in all this BS, because as black entertainers and black artists, he can be discarded and not, and not brought back. Okay, I understand he may be, maybe he looks good in person, but can you just help? I'm gonna say this to be fair. Can you help him with his poses? The face, the, the pictures is always, look, sir, please <laughs> do it. I can't. Girl, that's so shady. Oh my God. Oh, I, Megan, don't get her, Megan. Don't get her. Don't get her. I love Megan. Megan. Guilty as charged. <laughs> All right, Jonathan Majors replied to the backlash that he received and released the following statement. My intention was to convey my utmost respect for Coretta Scott King, her achievements in both her personal legacy and the one she shares with her husband, Dr. Martin Luther King. Okay, does this change anything? Let's go to you first, Flame. What are your thoughts? And you know, I like that we actually have an opposing person here that actually knows him because none of us know him. I don't know him. Mm -hmm. I don't think you know him. So, I, Like I said before, I think that was the way he meant it. But, you know, I think it was misinterpreted. But I hear what Al was saying when he said, don't say it about a white woman. But hell, Hillary Clinton followed in Coretta Scott's King suit, if you ask me, because Coretta stayed quiet about all the so, alleged infidelity. Hillary stood by her man. It shows strength. It shows power. Women are loyal creatures. And I think that's what he meant in that capacity. I don't think he meant to compare them exactly who the same, because Coretta was a, 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 a beacon of light for the black community. Megan is just a babe, baby, because Megan is a beautiful sister, baby. I've seen it up close and personal. She is one of the sexiest and most beautiful women, and kind, actually. And kind. Yeah, oh, my is. God, and kind. She has good vibes. Uh, Al, what do you think? Anything changed with this uh, mm -mm. attempt to clean no. it up? <laughs> mm -hmm. no. no. Al is stuck on it, baby. Well, what about tomorrow, Al? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow, not on MLK Day. We are not going to try to justify all of that disconnect with what this wonderful day means to the rest of us people in this black community and around the world. I'm no, I just can't do it today. And you know, I will take up for a rich, muscular, successful black man. For, so for him to go against Jonathan, Jonathan Major today, he really feel a way about this yeah. MLK thing. So we're going to go ahead and move on. So we, uh, coming up, we have your teeth back the other day. And later it was the term cowboy used as a racial slur. Let's get into it. When we come back, we'll be right back. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. We got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. 
This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you know the person, this? Because I speak English. <laughs> um, <laughs> proxy. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Welcome back to TGIF. Once again, happy MLK Day to the soulmates clocking in with us today. All right, we can all agree that social media tends to resurface some of the most random facts in pop culture history. So it's only fair that we unpack those facts in our T Fact of the Day. All right, y'all, do you remember the classic film, The Godfather? Every rapper talked about that show, that movie, The Godfather. Y'all remember, right? Yeah. Well, back in 1973, Marlon Brando, who played the Godfather, refused to accept the Academy Award for Best Actor due to the protests of American treatment of Native Americans. Wow, I didn't know this. What are your thoughts on this tea fact of the day? And if you could imagine an actor, could you imagine an actor making that move today, especially for the long forgotten to me, Native people of this country? Because we never really hear anything about them until Thanksgiving. Al, what do you think? Oh, that's pretty amazing. I don't I can't say that I knew that either, Claudia, but I will say that, you know, two years ago, not this year, not last year, but the year before, the Golden Globes were canceled because of I know it's not the same, but it's pretty significant because the Golden Globes is one of entertainment's biggest nights in Hollywood was actually canceled because of the racial divide of the underrepresentation of African Americans. So I mean, I know it's a far reach, but Actors are starting and have been very active, have been very good at being activists around certain things. And hey, I like the fact that he did it. And I like the fact that that's what they did with the Golden Globes a couple of years ago. All right, Flame, what do you think? A white man is protesting for the treatment, uh, the mistreatment of yeah. uh, American Indians, Native Americans. I knew that story because I probably think I was watching the Oscars when it actually happened. I was a kid. Uh, Marlon Brando had a lot of power and a lot of juice in Hollywood. And you ask, what would somebody do today? I don't agree with Al. I do agree that people do speak here and there, but it's never a huge protest. If Marlon Brando was in these critical times that we live in, these overly sensitive times that we live in, he would not only be canceled, his career would be done. It's, it's hard mm -hmm. to speak out now for a group, especially a minority group, on such a huge platform without everybody else's panties getting in a bunch. I think if he did it now, they, that he would be canceled. I honestly believe that. You know, um, it's it's really unfortunate, and we need more Marlon Brando, especially now. I mean, I, I've mentioned it before, and people flood my inbox whenever I mention Gaza. And it's like, if you don't automatically um, stand in solidarity, solidarity with everything Israel is doing, you're somehow um, anti-Semitic, and that is not the case. You can have empathy for the victims. You can have empathy for that tribe. You can have empathy for the, uh, the American Indians. You can have empathy for the, for the people that are being oppressed and hurt. And I think that should not be protested against and pushed back upon. We got to get to back to a point where we have more empathy for our fellow human beings, even if you don't belong to the same tribe. Listen to what I'm saying. You don't have to have people that are in your tribe to care about them. It's called humanity. So kudos to you, Marlon Brando. We respect that. All right, let's get back to some more topics and get back to being shady after we, we're just nice <laughs> for a minute. All right. Speaking of the Academy Awards, since the establishment of the award show in 1929, more than 3,000 honorees have received the Golden Statue. And out of that number, around 60 African Americans have won an Oscar in different categories. What are your thoughts on this statistic? And why do you think we continue to search for acceptance in this platform? Flame, we'll go to you first on this one. Wow, you know, Claudia, that is a great question. Why do we continue to look for acceptance outside of us? Because segregation made us feel like we weren't good enough. So we fought to be a part of something that, that we, when we got there, they still didn't want us. They still sometimes don't want us. And it's still never the same. So we push to get into a place. When we get into this door, we're still not treated how we will be treated in our own community. I'm going to say this. I just want to give a great shout out to Mr. Byron Allen for creating the Grio Awards. I went last year when they first started and this year, Cheryl Underwood hosted, and it is the black, it's not the black Oscars, but it's the Oscars for us. 
entertainers of color, entertainers that look different. And we feel grand there. He made everybody feel grand. It was so professional and laid out. If we stop looking for acceptance for other people and look within ourselves, we're going to be a better people. And plus, Byron Allen, if you need me to host, call me, boo, me and Claudia <laughs> and Al could do it. Oh, that'd hey. be pretty. <laughs> I like that idea. Okay, Flame, look at you trying to stick around for a few more months. Uh, uh, I love how you think. <laughs> Is that what I'm doing? I oh, mean, okay, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> Al, what do you think? And look, what do you think about Flame trying to get us a gig? Uh, uh, hey, anybody trying to bring in some money is fine with me. You know what? But let's really have a serious conversation around this. We, we, we are because they're the standard. They're the standard that they created for recognizing the best in the game. And we are the best in the game and we wanna be recognized. That's why we wanted the acceptance from it. The deal is that they still play these games and they decide when they want us to shine and when they don't, when we know that we dominate. Claudia, you know this, I live right here in Hollywood. I, I, I look out my window and I see them setting up for the Oscars. I live right across from the Adobe Theater where they have all the awards and the, and the energy in this talent is electrifying it's 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 seductive um uh, it's it's mesmerizing like it, it changes lives it changes narratives and we want to be a part of that because we deserve to be a part of that now because they continue to box us out i 110 agree with uh flame monroe we need to start supporting black media more we need to we need to start supporting the bet awards more we need to start supporting black women in hollywood more we we need to start supporting um, the NAACP awards more. All of those black outlets, we need our big stars. And I'm talking to you, Jay-Z, Beyonce, even Kanye, if he wants to come, Janet Jackson, Lenny Kravitz. We need you guys back on the carpet at these black events because it's a significant way to communicate the importance of those outlets. And mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting because when I was on the carpet, uh, Golden Globes on Sunday, the thing that really, really hurt my my heart was that those who talk about they have a commitment to talking to black media are the very ones that walked right past Fox Soul, as well as other black entities that were located next to me. And that type of mentality right there has to change unless it doesn't. If it doesn't, then we're going to continue to have a lot of people who want acceptance from the Oscars folks. I'm going to go a little deep on this one right here. I'm going to take it all the way back to the Willie Lynch letters. And they did what they were supposed to do. They continue to keep us divided. They continue to make us think that we are less than, and they continue to affect our self-esteem. Because we think that if a white person um, co-signs it or validates it, that it somehow carries more weight than when a black person does. I've been at all these award shows as a presenter and as a person in the audience. And I look around and see how many people that are not really in the business that are just seat fillers there because they can't get the star power from our black community that they should. It's a damn shame at the BET Awards, which are, call them what, there are Oscars and Grammys put together, okay? And our Image Awards and our Soul Train Awards, people want to deem it ghetto or less than, but they'd be begging and salivating at the mouth for tickets and acceptance to these white award shows. Not to say the white award shows are not bad. They are, but they are good. But why do we think ours are ghetto? Why do we keep thinking that something black is less than? Why do we undercut each other? Why do we ask for, like, we do this to ourselves, y'all. And at some point, we have to start with our individual mentality to start celebrating. Yo, I'm happy. BET's gonna give me tickets to this award show. I'm gonna post about it, and I'm gonna make it look as grand as I can on my social media. Stop downplaying what we do have these outlets, because they were made because we couldn't get in at theirs, and then we get in at theirs, a couple of us, and then we shit on our own. It makes no sense. Like, and that's what we got to get back to. We got to stop thinking, oh, this is a nice neighborhood. This is where all the white people live. Oh, I'm not going there. That's ghetto. That's where black people live. Why does black associate with less than and ghetto? And we have to take our part, our part in that um, mentality, our responsibility, because we perpetuate this. They started with Willie Lynch letters. It worked. And they are keeping us sleeping and then sleeping on ourselves. And we got to stop. Like, we got to be like, yo, it, we're not less than. We're not. Yeah. We, you know? we have to show that we are good enough for us. We are good enough for us. We keep looking for Mr. Him and Mr. or Miss That to say, you're, you're approved, you're in the White House, or you I am good enough for me because I said that I was good enough for me. We, and as a whole, that's what we have to do. The, I'm telling you, the Grey Awards is so grand and so classy. Byron Allen laid that out. I got to be a part of that. Oh, I got to be a part yeah. of that.
And stop acting like we don't even like each other. Like, stop it. Like, let's show love to each other. We yeah. all we got most of the time, but we don't act like we all we got. We act like we got them. No, we all we got half the time. So let's show that love. All right, y'all. That was a rant. I know. I'm sorry, y'all. I be getting real passionate. <laughs> I get passionate get about out, these Claudia. things. Get it out. I, I just get passionate about those things because I'm so frustrated with us as a people. We are not like we have grown, but we ain't that. We have so much more. We we are dope as hell. Talented, innovative, smart, intelligent. Have to work twice as hard for less the accolades, and we gotta stop like having such low self esteem as a collective. We do. Yeah. All right, coming up next, Jay Z shares his perspective on the term cowboy. Okay, production with that picture. And later, Shy Sky Jackson revealed that she let what she left behind in 2023. We're gonna get into it all after the break. We'll be right back. We got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. <laughs> All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you but know the person, this? Because I speak English. <laughs> um, <laughs> proxy. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, My kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You could say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You could ask with an app if it works for you. You could chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. I don't want to jump you, but you don't even qualify to speak on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I can clip. TGIF. Live and interactive. I need to clear this up, y'all. You are one of the main ones trying to push the narrative that your girl can't cook. Al has been in my house. I can cook. I'm going to test you out right here. What are acceptable types of smoked meat to put in the collard greens? Turkey next. Oh. <laughs> don't do me. <laughs> on Fox Soul. Don't you do me. <laughs> don't try it. Welcome back to TGIF. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Thanks for rocking with us on this holiday. All right, during the premiere of the, uh, the Book of Clarence, Jay-Z shared his thoughts on how the term cowboy was once used as a racial slur for Black people. Who knew? Check it out. From yeah. my research and my history, the term comes from, it was a slur, and obviously, like most things, you know, we made it look so good. It's like, <laughs> get that back. <laughs> Run it back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, let's go to you first, Al. What are your thoughts? Oh, he's right. <laughs> After the Civil Wars, there was a migration of the slaves that went west, and they went west for, you know, freedom. They wanted regular wages. They wanted, to, you know, the, the, the less social restrictions, like entering in the back of the restaurant or drinking out of only um, white, you know, non-black, non-white water fountains. So a lot of them migrated west. And when they migrated west, the experience that they had was handling cattle from working on the slave, I mean, working on the plantation. So they end up being what should be called cow hands. But they only called uh, white people cow hands. And because the blacks started doing the job and helping a lot, they start calling them cow boys. And as you know, boy was a very negative, racist, put down uh, connotation to people of color. So they called them cow boys, which was, you know, a, a what a way of saying, boy, go out there and help with the cows or go out there and help with the herd. So in fact, there is a very strong racial undertone. But look how God moves and how he makes things happen. One of the largest sports franchise in the world, not in just the country, but in the the world is called cowboy. That's right. Flame, what are your thoughts? Uh, I love what Jay-Z said about 
uh, like we do everything else. We we reach we repackage it and made it our own. Just like they tried to serve us slop chitlins with slop. Black people made it a delicacy. We started off with the word nigga. We took back ownership of that word, and now we call each other with the A H instead of the E R in love in so many different capacities that you have to be a part of our culture and our community to understand how it is. Like everything else, black people are the strength that we have to recycle anything that you throw at us. But I think that we keep losing sight on how much power we have. I wasn't even aware of that story out until you said that. I never knew that. I, I listen. You know, my favorite thing about a cowboy was the song "Save a Horse <laughs> and Ride a Cowboy." <laughs> I'm ready to ride a cowboy. Woo! <laughs> Lame. All right, because it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day today, I'm, I guess I'm on my Claudia Luther King Jr. kick today. No offense to the family. I'm just saying this. White America owes Black people such so much. I'm going to go ahead and touch upon reparations on top of everything else they owe us on top of an apology for the damage that they have done to our psyche over the course of the time that our people have been kidnapped and brought on over to here. Because even little things as language, right, little things like that, uh, further piggybacking off of what I just said of keeping our self-esteem down. You're a boy. You're not a man. You're less than. You're three-fourths of a, a human. You're less than the white man. And that, we don't realize how it gets into our psyche, but like you said, Flame, we remixed it and we took it back and we made it cool. And now, yes, the most valuable franchise in sports is the, the Cowboys here in Dallas where I'm at. And they don't think that's a bad thing. Now do that. But, you know, it, it's we have a we we have a lot of things in our language that we have to kind of uh, you know pay attention to because it definitely affects our self esteem. And shout out to Jay Z for speaking on this. All right, moving on. How would y'all pronounce this name? <laughs> Take a look. Noah Kaninga. Well, a white high school student athlete named Noah recently went viral over what is the correct pronunciation of his last name, which is spelled K N I G G A. Okay, now the star athlete is finally breaking down the correct pronunciation of his name. Let's see if that, that K is silent or not, Al. Let's see. Okay. How do you pronounce the last name? Oh, so this is how you pronounce it. It's Noah Kanega. You said uh, Kanega. <laughs> I mean, he might need to change the spelling of that name. What are your thoughts on this unusual last name? Hey, I like, oh, so I got it right. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, it's a you Polish. did not get it right, Al. I'm not going Kananga. <laughs> you said Kananga. I said Kananga, didn't I? I said something. He said Kananga. Oh, that oh. one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a Polish last name. That's the origin of it. I think that the thing I don't like about this going viral, all right? I understand it's his last name. I understand that it's on his birth certificate. I understand that he can't do anything about changing it. I just don't like how, what makes me cringe is how he plays with it. Like, you know, he's on TikTok, he's doing these different things, throwing it around because he knows what it infers. And I think that's the part that makes me the most uncomfortable. He's putting it on t-shirts, he's singing stuff with it. I that's the problem I have with it. Other than that, what is what are we going to do? It's his name. He has the right to do what he wants to do with his name. But I just want him to be a little bit more culturally sensitive to what playing with that name and the connotation of N-I-G-G-A means to the rest of us. All right. Flame? I want to know what kind of Letterman's jacket he's wearing because I want to know how big the hood is because that's too many letters to put on the back of a Letterman's jacket when you're going to school. <laughs> I, I heard what Al said, and I get you, Al, but that is the climate that we live in now because, like I said before, we took back the power of the ER to the AH. So him playing with it on TikTok shows fun, but it's the climate that we live in now. Everybody is so overly sensitive and overly mm. critical about anything. To me, it looks like I'm playing with it. I'm having fun with it because I'm showing you that it didn't defeat me. But the rest of the world is so pissed off about anything that you say that's going to crush their little feelings that, you know, that's why other people are saying he shouldn't be doing that. He shouldn't be. If it was left up to y'all, we wouldn't be doing anything. I just don't know? like the coded racism. Sorry, Flame. That's coded racism. You putting it on T-shirts. You making mockery of it on, on Instagram and on TikTok. I mean, come on. I'm not asking a lot for him to just understand the sensitivity around the word and the pain in which that word was birthed. Okay, so that's all I'm asking. Just be a little bit more sensitive about it because it's not as simple as, oh, 
That's just my last name. And definitely, I'm not going to tolerate it on Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> okay, tomorrow, y'all. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, fail. Tomorrow. <laughs> you know, as you two were going back and forth with both your points, I'm listening, I'm hearing things I like in both your points. I was trying to think about, I always try to relate it to, okay, well, what if it was reverse, right? Like, what if your last name was Kakraka? You know, and you like toyed with it or with something that's more, more sensitive, like a Jewish last, something that, you know, would be a, considered a slur. Would it be taken as playfully or would it be like a cancellation thing? I try to think about it in that regard. Well, if it was Jewish, we already know that they're not going to tolerate it. <laughs> you're not going to play At with all. a Jewish name. You ain't yeah. going to make fun of it. You ain't going to do a skit. You're not going to do none of that because they're going to stand up and they're going to say, hey, this is disrespectful and this community is going to make you accountable. So that's how I feel about it. And I'm just saying I don't have a lot of power or influence, but on MLK, MLK Day today, <laughs> the only one of this us they let get, we, the only one of us they let get away with doing a Jewish name is Whoopi Goldberg. I think everybody All else right. got to have a you got to be Jackson or Brown or Smith. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep it locked because coming up next guy Jackson reveals what she left behind in 2023 and later find out which late singer will be performing in AI form. Oh, here we go with the technology. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. What's going on, Claudia? I'm in the White House, and if I'm not on the show tomorrow, then something happens. <laughs> you in prison. <laughs> TGIF. Listen to what you just said. You are broadcasting your show from the White House. If that is not the hope and the dream of the slave, then I do not know what is. Live and interactive. I just met the White House press secretary, and she knows me, and I think she knows me from T. I said, I have to go broadcast. She goes, oh, that's right. You're live. And I'm like, you know about us. On Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all. In an interview at the Golden Globe, Golden Globes, actress Sky Jackson revealed that she left a lot of her friends in 2023. What are your thoughts on this? And what did you leave behind in 2023? Alex, go to you first. Oh, wow. I for some reason, you guys know she stopped and she talked to us at Fox Soul on the Golden Globes. This young girl, she is so beautiful, you all. Her poise, her vernacular, her temperament. And she's only 21. Like, she is very mature presenting. Um, and when I heard her say this, I was like, wow, what have you been through? You're only 21. For someone to say they're leaving their friends, that, I mean, how, how mature is that? Because she knows where she's going you know, they can't go with her or for some reason they can't go with her. So I thought it was profound. And I thought it was profound coming from someone um, who's only 21 years old. Cause I'm thinking at 21, geez whiz, that was my, that was my time where I collected all of my <laughs> raggedy friends. <laughs> I used to hang out with some of the raggediest people when I was 21, but um, I liked it. I liked it. And in fact, I'm going to use that because what I've noticed as of late, and especially as I get older, my friend circle is getting smaller 
and smaller and smaller. I, I mean, I can honestly say besides just my family, I may only have one or two real, real in the, in the, you know, in the gutter or in the, in the trenches with me. All right. So what are you going to leave behind? Anything in 2023? Um, all them raggedy friends. I was just <laughs> talking okay. about I'm going to leave all of them behind. No. Yeah. What am I leave behind in 20? Mm, this sometimes I'm going to, I'm going to leave behind my inability to just let God take over and just have faith and, and move forward. Okay. Flame, what do you think? First of all, I'm leaving back hateration, holleration in this. <laughs> Let me tell you something. She's 21 years old. Those were not real friends. I'm not saying that you can't have friends or longevity terms, but at 21, you're still getting to know you. You will not have a real long-term friend until you know who you are because you want your friend to accept you for who you are, just like you want to accept them. I have, I have friends that I've had for 50 years. 50 years. I know y'all thought I was like 39, but I have friends that I have for 50 years. And those are established relationships that I know these people and I can lean on these people and trust them with my life. They're not going to get angry with me and go blast me somewhere. They're not going to tell my personal secrets because we have grown together to know and right. nurture and love and truly respect each other for who we are. Do my friends always agree with the things I say? And these are even some of my trans sisters. Absolutely not. But we, we respect each other for who we are. So by her saying she let her friends go in 2023 and she's only 21 years old, girl, those weren't your friends. That was that wine speaking. She had some of that, you had some of that butter rose of Al's. I know what it is. <laughs> Chardonnay. Wait a minute, Flame. Wait a minute, Flame, Flame. Hold on. I don't want to start no mess on the show. Come on, wait a I can handle you. You Google how old is Flame Moreau. Your picture comes up and it says 44. Now, I can't I can't be too mad because when you Google Al Reynolds, some age like 55 or 56 comes up and I am 110% not that old. But how did you get them to put that you're 44 on the internet? Al, I thought you were at least 60. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> how did you do that? I'm serious. I'm they also it. say I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a woman on the internet. So, I mean, I'm just saying the internet is made up. It also says I'm worth like a uh, million dollars. Somebody on the internet owes me about 300,000 more dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's definitely lies on the internet with the money. You can put it in show last. Say it again, Claudia. There are. Uh, there's like someone that me and Al used to be cool with that said they was worth $25 million. And that was just not the case. What? You can go on who's, uh, uh, what is it, Celebrity Net Worth, and you can put whatever amount you want in there. Um, as far uh -huh. as Guy, I'm going to say this. Uh, I'll tell you during the break, Al, who it was. Um, uh, she's 21, right? But right. she's not like a normal 21, like, you know, mm -hmm. out of the public eye. So I, I, what made me sad about this is she probably has a case of some of the friends that she started off with being jealous of her success, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have, she's probably frustrated. She probably has mm -hmm. that mentality of let me bring everybody with me and maybe it didn't go down. Maybe there's a lot of jealousy in her circle. This woman is on the carpet of these prestigious award shows. She's doing mm -hmm. a thing. She's beautiful like Alsa. She's gorgeous. And she's lovable. So when you're like mm -hmm. that and you have a lot of light on you, you're going to have a lot of people in the in the mm -hmm. trenches kind of praying for your downfall. And she probably has a lot of hate at the young age of 21, which is sad. You know what I mean? Like, it's sad that you just can't just, like, do your thing. So I, I, I'm sorry for you, Sky, but you're going to find some way better friends like we all have as we've all evolved and grown. Yeah, and hopefully yeah. you'll have yeah. friends for 50 years like Flame Monroe, even though Flame is only 44 years old. <laughs> but you know what? You just brought up something, Claudia, that I thought is really – and it's really – in in. It's, it gives a lot of intel. I forgot she's on the verge of being a super mega yeah. star. Yeah. So you're right, Claudia. You're right. She's she's starting to breathe rare air, and everybody can't go with her to that rare air space. So I'll tell you this, uh, uh, Sky. You can always call on your big brother uh, Al or your big sister <laughs> Claudia or Flame Moreau because well, wait a minute. Why well, can't be one of the pronouns? I'm the Uncle, Uncle and Auntie. Okay, the Auntie. <laughs> okay, and Auntie. Auntie. I think, Unc. I think it's important for you to still keep people. <laughs> people that you can trust in your yeah. circle and you can call yeah. on. I know you can call on me anytime if you need me. <laughs> and like, that, like you said, Al, everyone can. Al always pimping. Al, stop pimping. Oh my I'm God. to get a friend of a friend over there. Uh, everyone can't go with you. There's something called survivor's remorse, you know, which means like you're the person that made it out of your, your out of the hood or out of your circle. And it, you, she probably, you know, you can have, you feel guilty. I remember when I got on the housewives, a friend of mine, I lost a friend cause she thought I was going to bring her with me. And it was like, I can't bring you with me. I'm not there yet. And it became a thing that I change. I'm different. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not changing. I'm still trying to get there. 
Right. And Scott, you're 21 years old. Do not put that pressure on you that everyone it has to be on your back. You know? Anyways, in other news, uh, our girl Kiki Palmer made history after becoming the first black woman yeah. ever and the first woman in 15 years to win an Emmy for Best Game Show Host for NBC's Password. This is major. What are your thoughts on this historic moment for Kiki? Let's go to you first, Flame. What do you think? Well, Kiki Palmer is from Chicago, and I love that we watched her grow up from a little girl to a grown woman actress. And I'm telling you, having that baby, has you have seen her go from a little girl to a to a woman, to a mother, to a grown woman, because it's steps to becoming all of those things. I love it, and I'm so proud of her because she's been in the trenches, and she has done all kind of movies and everything. She has the biggest personality, and that baby gave us some jugs, baby. You're in competition, <laughs> Kiki, but come on and get it. I was so elated for her. Her stylist has happened. her been looking so fantastic lately with the hair. Congratulations. She has a big personality. It's going to go far. We need more female game show hosts as well. I don't know of any other female game show host. I think Mer Meredith Vieira from Rhode Island did a little bit. She used to be on The View, but there's not a lot. So for you to be a black woman yeah. and get this award for best game show host is a big deal. That is a space dominated by men, white men at that, except for Wayne Brady and maybe like one other. Al, what do you think about this major accomplishment? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> congratulations, it, Kiki. You know, thank you for changing the landscape, though, in entertainment yeah. business, especially when it comes to the game show host space. You know, Sherry Shepard had a game show. Um, Tiffany Haddish had a game show. I don't know how long they lasted, but they too have stepped stepped their foot into this pond. I just like the idea that she won an Emmy because once you win that Emmy, you get that recognition, and then you have a voice in the space, and I like it. But you know what I, I find so interesting in entertainment? You can have some of your best days, like winning the Emmy, but also on the other side, still fighting. You know, with your restraining orders with your man. It's just so interesting to me that you can't get the good sometimes without the bad. But definitely, congratulations to Kiki and keep up the good work and I can't wait to see what else she's got that she's going to pull out of her pocket especially in the next 10 or so years major 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 yeah. accomplishment we salute you Kiki Palmer switching gears we have an update on Kiki Palmer and her there we go Al you just said it and her baby daddy Dusty Darius Jackson all right let's get into this Kiki has decided to extend the restraining order against Darius for six more months until their new court date, which is scheduled for July. According to page six, the couple is now engaged in mediation before a private judge. This is sad because, again, she just celebrated that and now she got to go to this. Oh. Are you hoping this couple will work it out and be back together? Or should they stay far, far away from each other? Al, what do you think? You know, I'm not in that relationship. And only Kiki and Darius knows this. Um, this is concerning, though. I mean, that she's keeping the restraining order in, in, in order. I mean, especially after we saw all the new development, her emails to him, her texts to him. I think for me in this relationship, as far as taking stake into it, I'm just going to stay out of it. Because for me, I need to see more evidence, right? I want to see the entire video. I want to see who's attacking who and who did what to who. Um, and I just hate the fact that we have to mix these two stories together, even though I did just kind of say it, because she is on such a high. So I, I don't know. It just got me feeling some kind of way. And I would rather them to take this off their internet, take this off of social media, take this off of the public eye, and try to figure out what they're going to do because they do have a beautiful young child that they still have to raise together. Blaine, what are your thoughts? Uh, as a parent, I'm thinking she's doing it for custody reasons because I had I, I had custody battle with my baby mama or with my daughters. So it, it will hold more weight in the court for her to, to keep that restraining order. But I think they still have a sexual chemistry. I personally believe that mm -hmm. they still might be getting it in with each other. The restraining mm -hmm. order ain't gonna stop that. But when it comes down to the legalities of it all, I think she wants to be have sole possession of her children. So I can understand her coming in it from that aspect. But on the father's right side, cause y'all know I'm he, she, we. I've been on his side and on her side. From the father's right aspect, it looks bad because they give mothers all the rights. I know what they're putting out in the news, but that does not mean that he is not a good on hands dad. But for legality reasons and for who she is and where her career is going, I think it's a great business move. I think it's a smart move. Somebody has advised her right. I just hope they work it out and not in the public. You, you know what sucks in these kind of cases? I have a really good friend of mine that's going through this uh, a, a really, really nasty battle, custody battle with her uh, baby daddy. And a lot of times he can get on social media and be reckless and run his mouth. And it's just like, oh, he's just trying to be a good father to his child. And if he posts one Instagram picture, like 
pretending to do his kid's hair. It's father of the year, right? Right. And yes, there are men that are definitely being unlawful, horribly kept away from their kids and there's bitter baby mamas, of course. But then the mother that I know of, any reaction she gives is deemed as she's an unstable, bitter woman. Yeah. And it's just like, I just feel like it's so complicated. And then none of us are in their relationship. And I know I shaded him in the beginning only because the track record with Kiki has been unproblematic. We've all said she grew up before our eyes. We've never heard of Kiki being in no mess like this until the pairing with this guy. And now it's just so hard. I hope they can work it out and have at least a calm co-parenting relationship yeah. and get past this. All right, y'all, get into the story. Simone Biles' husband, NFL player Jonathan Owens, claims that he had no idea who Simone was when she messaged him on the dating app Raya. I know this story is a little bit outdated, but we never really got to get to it, and I'm glad we get to get to it on this MLK Day. Jonathan told Vanity Fair, a lot of people don't believe me when I say I had no clue. He added, I never once was like, oh, let me check out gymnastics. And he noted that he was in football training camp while she was competing in the Olympics. Do y'all really believe Jonathan didn't recognize Simone at first? Because since then, people, you know, the internet sleuths done one on Twitter and dug up him posting about the Olympics prior about, you know, gymnastics. And it's just like, it's really hard to believe it. But hey, who knows? What do I know? Al, what you think? You believe it? or <laughs> Honestly, I don't care. <laughs> this couple <laughs> is so... This couple, I'm obsessed with this couple and just how I'm obsessed with their vibe. I enjoy watching them enjoy their lives, enjoying yeah. their new love, enjoying their marriage. They're on TikTok together and they're on Instagram together. He's wearing her clothes. She's wearing his clothes. I, you know I'm a sucker for black love, everybody. <laughs> everybody on this show knows I'm that guy. I love this black love. I love watching it. Do you really think he didn't know who she was? Come on now. I, I think, you know, especially Especially if you watch the Olympics, because that's one of the things you do as an athlete is watch other athletes and greatness. She's one of the greatest athletes of all time, male and female. He knew who she was, but who cares? They love each other. I enjoy watching this young black love. And I say thumbs up to both Kiki and her man. Kiki. Uh I mean, Simone, Simone, Simone. Something about Kiki, okay. <laughs> Simone, Simone. Both of them got attractive boyfriends and husbands, but for Simone and her man, I, I, I love those two. Blaine, what do you think? I think it's quite coy, and I think it's so cute. Young love, and I think it makes, he, he wanted the people to think that he was the golden goose. He was the prize. He was the catch. Right. And it's okay to play that. That's very attractive. I do believe that he knew who she was. But I love that he put that out there to say like, hey, women can still be attracted to me. She came after me because so many women are so reserved. I, will, I want to be the chase. I want to be the chase. I want to be the chase. And he came out and said, I was the chase. She came and got some of this over here. I wonder does she do any of those balance beam moves on him? <laughs> I, you know, I want I want to be a fly on the wall for that because she's so tiny. <laughs> I want to be on the balance beam. He can he can basically do any position he wants, standing up, a handspring, come back, back flip, come back, everything. Come back, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just saying. I can okay. see it with my own eyes. I think it's young. I think it's adorable. And I think it shows hope to other young women who, or, who always say, I'm waiting on a man, my husband, I'm husband. But sometimes you need to speak up. You might walk past your husband in the grocery yeah. store and you're waiting for him to speak to you, speak to him. So I think it gives hope to, to younger women to say, I can be the aggressor. I think it's cute, but with a side eye. Now, if there's nothing that comes after this, then fine. If there's other stuff that comes after this that's problematic, we'd be like, see, that was a red flag back then. He wanted to let like, everybody think that he was a prize. But I am definitely a, a, a proponent of women making it known if you're attracted to a man because sometimes they just don't know. And sometimes, you know, like I think it's cute that she did that. I have no problem with that. But once y'all get together, I do think it is your job as the man to protect your woman and make her always look like, you know, she's 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 not thirsty. And I think because most of people did not watch the entire interview, they only got the the headlines yeah. that were like, he's shading her, he's the bad bitch in the relationship, and he wants people to know that he didn't know who she was and he was downplaying her. And we're very protective about Kiki Palmer, Simone Biles, yeah. and Angela Bassett. You cannot play about those women. So I think that's what happened. And then we all started chiming in. But I don't have any doubt that he loves her. I will say this, what was cute. As a very attractive, young, up-and-coming football player, right? I'm sure he got a lot of women that are after him. 
And he said he wasn't necessarily ready to kind of settle down, but because Simone was so special, it did change and speed up his timeline, which yeah. we got to give him props for that. So at first I was like, everybody else like, hold up. Then I was like, okay, okay, okay. All right. But they are sexy and they gonna make a very cute child one day. Cause they are both absolutely gorgeous. I, All right, I coming bet, up next. I bet you they practicing right now. <laughs> they practicing right now. Oh, oh having that cute child. <laughs> young, young, wasn't young love so fun when you first it get was. Oh, Okay, I we got to move. Yesterday. Mm -mm. Okay, 44 year old <laughs> flame. All right. <laughs> Deal. Coming up next, Jessica Alba gets candid about therapy with her daughter. Stay tuned. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you but know the person, this? Because I speak English. Um, <laughs> proxy. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. All right, y'all. Actress Jessica Alba revealed that she started therapy with her 15-year-old daughter. Jessica said, we were arguing all the time about dumb stuff. I was like, I don't want to live like this. I don't want us to have a wedge between us. Wow, that's amazing. Usually in Black households, they'd be like, uh, don't talk back. It ain't about therapy. It's like, do as I say and all that kind of stuff. So I think this is a good thing. Do you think more parents should consider this form of parenting? And Flame, you know, you're a parent. Would you be open to therapy with your kids, or is it I said what I said and that's it? Uh, that was it. I said what I said and that's it. I don't need no damn therapy. This is my house. I pay all the bills. I'm your mama and your daddy. And I remind my children all the time that I used to be a teenage boy and a teenage girl. You can't get away with nothing with me. So, yeah, I don't need the therapy. I think that's healthy for some people because it's going to help both of them. But no, not, we don't need therapy in my house. I run the house. So, yeah. But Flame, our parents always right just because they're parents? Because there are some ratchet ass parents out there that you can't say that they always get it right, right? That's Maybe. the truth, but these American teenagers, when I say American teenagers, I'm not talking about any nationality, race, or color. These American teenagers nowadays are out of control. So from 15 to maybe 21, I'm telling you, you're going to have to call rank. You have to be the parent in that house. You cannot be their friend at those ages because they will put you in a box. I'm telling you, I'm living with three of them now. Are you against therapy? I'm not against therapy, but I ain't got time for therapy right now. I'm working. I got things to do, baby. I got to get my paper bag. I got to get my coins. So basically, Flame, you saying fuck them kids. Exactly. 
<laughs> All right, Al. We need you ain't parents, and maybe that's a good uh, thing. I don't know. Uh, uh, what you think about this, Al? Therapy. I thought it was. I thought it was brilliant. You know, th you know, therapy can be pricey, and so I can understand that it can't. You know, it's not an option for a lot of people. But I think that it's very smart and insightful for a mother to say this disconnect between me and my daughter, who I'm raising, needs more help than just what I can provide. And I think if us as people, black people in particular, because we're the least to use therapy, take that mindset and think outside of ourselves, then maybe it could be a better thing for all of us. I do like that she's open to, I mean, there's flames way of parenting, which I definitely had that in our household, even though my mom's from Italy. And then there's the, okay, maybe um, I'm getting it wrong, you know? All right. Well, what do we know? Should we ain't got kids and flame does. So you, you doing something right. 15 year old, you was a 15 year old girl. You know what, what starts at 15 girls start smelling themselves and feeling themselves. I'm telling you that opens up a whole Pandora's box. Oh I my God. Now I got one here now. Well, thank you so much for everything. I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Flame Monroe, for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Y'all got to stick around for Fox Soul Face Off. They go down. They go at it on that show. Happy MLK Day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Al. Bye, Flame. Bye. Happy MLK Day. Bye.